Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we're gonna to be doing part three of our YouTube kitchen build. We've made a lot of progress and I can't wait to show you what we've got done. So you ready? Let's get into this. Well, we just had Hurricane Hillary blowing through here last night. And luckily our house isn't underwater or anything like that. But we did have enough water hitting shed for us to see a little bit of water intrusion. You can see it right down there. At first I was a little bit disenchanted because I thought I sealed that bottom plate up really good. But what I found out was that it didn't come in from underneath the door. It came in from up above, right up here, right above the top of the framing. As you can see, that's all wet right there. You can see I blew all this insulation in up here, but that's really just to fill in air gaps. That doesn't do anything for waterproofing. So after inspecting that a little bit more, I was able to determine that the water is leaking in into the top of all of these panels here. These aren't sealed at all against the exterior of the shed. So any moisture that comes down in from the outside is gonna kind of seep in through here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go around the entire shed and all of these pieces of trim, I'm gonna seal those up with silicone caulking all the way back and forth and all the way around the edges of all the openings in the house. I'm gonna have to hit all this side trim probably up around that vent. And I'm gonna have to make sure that all this trim on the side and all around the window there are sealed as well. Ironically, this is up here to redirect the rain, but that's not sealed here either. So the water is just getting in behind this and coming straight down. Keep in mind that if you're doing a project like this, you gotta remember that this over here is a shed. This is not a house. So there's an awful lot of stuff that you have to do that you wouldn't normally do when you're putting a room into a house or something like that. Because this right here is all there is plus the framing. So making sure you have a good seal is really super important because if you don't, you're gonna get water inside your walls and then you're gonna have rot and then you're gonna have a really bad day. If anything, even if you don't like doing DIY stuff around your house, at least you might be able to pick up a little bit of information in these videos for the shed, at least enough so you know what to look for. So when you do hire people in for that type of stuff, you at least have a better chance of figuring out whether or not they're doing a good job for you. Okay, you can see this ceiling here goes on white. That's something you have to realize that when this dries, it's gonna be clear. Cause I didn't really read the directions and it says right in there that it's gonna start off white and dry clear. So after I ran my finger over this like this to seal it in, you can see all the sealant just sort of getting in between all the grain of the wood. And it really looks like, and it really looks like crap. Well, I was freaking out about that since I don't know how to read and I was trying to scrub off all of this excess, which you can imagine is not the preferred way to try to do that. So don't be like me, read the directions. And here's how it looks when the sealant dries up and turns clear. You almost can't even tell it's there, so it looks really, really good. I've already picked up my smoke detector because I got this on eBay for a really great deal. This is a one link safe and sound. It's got the regular smoke detection and carbon monoxide detection as well but it also has an Amazon Alexa built in and a pretty good speaker built into this too. Since we use Alexa in our house, we'll be able to use this to sort of automate a lot of things here in the kitchen. There goes our smoke detector mounted. Kind of useless right now though, since we don't have any power to it. Just got done running the power lines for the double oven and our separate induction cooktop. And look how thick the wire is for this. Just for a frame of reference, there's the wire and there's my thumb. You can see right here that I got most of my electrical panel wired up now. Once we get the service line in here, we can flip the switch and turn on the power. That's gonna be fun. What's the worst that could happen? <sighs> well, anyway, moving right along. So what do you think of my wiring job, guys? Pretty sweet, huh? And don't worry about the cover being off of the panel. It's not dangerous because there is no service line running in here just yet, so. Basically, it's a big brick right now, at least for another few weeks. I got to run a water line from our well way out there, all the way down to right here, coming through that wall. I got to run power line all the way about 50 feet past that gate yonder over there. And we're gonna have to run it all along our property here 
take a turn in front of that shed, come all the way back through here, and we're gonna have to hook that up onto the back side of the shed over there. So that's something like 260 feet, and that stuff is like five or six bucks a foot, so that's gonna suck when I get to that. But it's coming real soon. And the only other trench I gotta dig is way off in the front of the house. You can't even see it from here. It's way past the side of that room over there. All the way down our property line, over here and down there, and also into the shed, kind of where the power line's coming in. And that's gonna be our ethernet line for the internet, obviously. Looks like I just got my coach lights in the mail. Looking pretty cool, huh? We're gonna be installing these over there and right over here. By the way, if this is your first time here and you want to learn some cool new recipes, get some great cooking tips and tricks and all sorts of other kitchen related things, then start now by subscribing to the channel and clicking the notification bell so you never miss a thing. And those are done. Looks pretty good, huh? Only took me two hours. Bruh. Since our last update, you can see we've been busy trenching. Right now we have about 130 feet of our trench for the power line dug. But we still have about another 130 feet to trench on that, and we're gonna be going through a bunch of root and other things, so that's gonna be a big pain in the neck. You can see it curving around the back of the studio right there. In addition to the trench for the power service line, we also had to run a trench for our water. Luckily, our well is over in the shed, and that's only about 50 feet from our studio, so cutting that trench wasn't really all that bad. But we still had to use a pickaxe to break the ground up a little bit, and then we had to use a trenching shovel in order to dig that out. Once we got that done, it was easy enough just to run PVC from the well all the way over to our studio, run it up the wall and in. Also, we're not connecting the studio up to sewer, we're using a French drain system. So that means no oils or food particles or anything like that. That's all well and good because you're really not supposed to pour that stuff down your drains anyway. Anyway, we ran that trench about 20 feet away from the building and that should give it plenty of space to spread that moisture out and it'll also help irrigate some of our trees back here as well. So anyway, all the digging that we have left to do is to finish running that service line up to the house and one long trench to run our network cable up as well. Seems easy enough, but that's really an ass ton of work. Remember, it's always best practice to get all your permits and use licensed contractors for any work that needs to be done by professionals. Even if you're doing a project as a DIY, it doesn't hurt to consult a licensed contractor that knows what they're doing to help you out. Otherwise, doing something like this back here could go from being a fun project to a huge nightmare. With any luck, in the next part of the series, we should have working electricity and running water. I'll tell you, I can't wait for that, and this is getting really exciting. If you liked this video, we have the entire playlist for the series right here. That might be fun to check out, especially as we get further along in the project. Well, that's it for now. I hope to see you back again here really soon, and until that time, I'm Joe, and I hope you have a phenomenal day. Take it easy.